Hi everyone! Welcome to another soap making video for Petrichor Soap Company. I'm Mel and today we are making our uh, wild rose soap. Um, this is an oat milk soap obviously with a, a really nice um, fresh cut rose scent and this is a custom um, design, a custom bar that is only available for a at a shop rather in in Leduc uh, called Magpie's Collection. Um, so they contacted me a while back. They had a previous um, artisan soap maker that they were working with that was going out of business and they were wondering if I could um, sort of interpret it, this design for them and make up um, something that I could then provide them with. Uh, so this is what I came up with. And um, the first thing that I put in there was the oat milk and then some pink clay. There's pink clay in this bar, which is one of my all-time favorite additives. Um, and then just to boost up the um, pink color a bit, I do put in some magic red mica from Windy Point. Um, just to give it a little bit of an extra pop, but also has the goodness of that French clay in there. And then to uh, mellow things out a little, um, I do put in some dispersed titanium dioxide. Um, so it's a, a simpler bar. You're going to have this really beautiful creamy pink base. There's going to be a cocoa powder line in the middle. And then on the top, our traditional swoop with um, some really pretty rose petals. And uh, this is a, a straight up rose scent. Um, it's uh, it's not as perfumey as some roses go. Again, it's got some of that greenery in to to bring it back down to more of a florist shop um, scent, which which I really enjoy. I don't I don't like the really cloying perfume scents. I do like them to be a little bit more on the natural side, but it's definitely rose. It, you get what you uh, you get what you ask for <laughs> when you buy this soap. Um, because it's a rose scent, it is going to move fast. If anyone's ever worked with a rose scent before, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, however, I know that I've made this bar several times now, so I kind of know what I'm getting into. I know how much to mix. Um, and I still, I, I don't find any trouble working with it. It doesn't misbehave like ricine or anything. It's just, it thickens up quicker than, than other uh, fragrance oils do. Um, so we're in the, the grips of our false spring here in uh, central Alberta, Canada. I don't know if you guys have false spring where you are, but around February usually we get maybe a week or two of really nice weather, the snow starts melting, uh, cabin fever starts hitting like a peak and you just feel like you want to be outside because spring should be starting. And I know in lots of places of the world like my parents are out on Vancouver Island, it's spring is starting out there but it's not going to truly start here for probably another couple of months at least. So we have fall spring, which gets our hopes up, and then uh, typically through March we may be in for some really crappy cold weather, um, probably some more snow before uh, the true spring <laughs> sets in. So we're kind of like hobbits with meals as far as springs go. We have at least one or two, sometimes three, before we truly get going. Uh, so as you can see, the soap's so nice and workable here, um, but it is going to start moving quickly. And I'm just getting ready for the cocoa powder line. I even try to texture it a bit just to get it a little bit more of a like natural looking line between, but <laughs> it's not holding its texture quite so well. but I don't want to wait too long because I know my time is, is running short. Um, 
I, if you've never put a uh, cocoa powder or a mica line in your in your soap before, um, I guess my biggest advice is to put less than you think you need in. <laughs> the first time I did this, the bar I had just completely separated in the middle. So when I'm trying to put it in there, I you'll see like it looks really dark brown on the soap because it's starting to absorb some of the oils. And um, I find you want to keep it at that dark brown stage. If you if you start to um, pile it up too much, you'll see the natural light brown of the cocoa, and then that's typically going to be too much. It's you you risk separating your bar at that point. So there, it's pretty thick, but it's still nice and workable. It's it's a really nice consistency actually. It's not soap on a spoon or anything like that. kind of looks like a strawberry pudding. I'm sorry if the light's a little bit weird in this video. Uh, the big challenge of, of <laughs> filming kind of in the winter season is that the light is super unpredictable for us. Um, it starts setting early, so even if I'm making a bar you know, this this was I think a couple, or at least maybe last month that I was filming this, so the sun's still setting quite early, which is what's coming in the window there, that harsh um, sort of dying light, um, not the nice filtered ambient light <laughs> of earlier on in the day, but it is what it is, and if I want to keep sharing videos, that's kind of what we deal with right now. I'm just going ahead with the the regular swoop and it's so gratifying to do this on the quicker moving soaps because it makes such a nice texture on top. I love it. I could do it all day. And then I'm just going in with some uh, really pretty rose petals on top. Just because it gives a really nice botanical look and I think it just sets it off nicely. So we have been doing a couple markets in the early spring here. Um, it's been going okay. Uh, markets, and maybe I'm just, you know, going to smaller markets, so it's not typically super busy for me, but it's always super nice to get out of the house and meet customers, and, and not only that, but meet other vendors that um, making those connections of other makers in the community. That's almost what I enjoy the most um, out of doing these markets. And uh, I do have uh, another market coming up next weekend in the uh, town of Beaumont, or if it's a city now, I can't remember. <laughs> but either way, I'm going to be in Beaumont, which um, I really like driving out there. It's a, it's a nice drive for me. I don't have to go on the major roads. So if you're in Beaumont next weekend, I hope we will see you. Um, and here we go for the cut. Um, just a kind of nice rustic bar, which is my style. Uh, you'll see the cocoa powder line, um, not as prominent in some of the areas as I, I would have liked. It, it sort of disappears, but it is what it is. Rustic, handmade. I still really like it. And, uh, uh I enjoy this, this design. Looks like it should be in a country cottage somewhere. Kind of like my wildflower bar, but, um maybe a little bit more elegant. So 
So you don't do a whole lot of, of custom work um, with, with businesses. It's something that I'm kind of on the fence with. I, I do enjoy doing it. Um, but the, the client has to be willing to buy so much of it because I have to keep the stuff in stock and um, it's I can't sell this anywhere else but to them. So, so far it's been a really great relationship with them. I'm so happy to be working with them and um, their customers seem to be really happy with this bar. Uh, I make three um, bars for them now. One is uh, two are custom just for them and then another is a version of my black chamomile soap which I think I'm going to be doing a video on that shortly. Um, but yeah I really like this bar. It's it's um, it's soft, it's floral, it's romantic. Uh, if you're if you're in the area and you want to pick up a bar for Valentine's Day for yourself or for your sweetheart, then I think it's a really great gift. And there we are. Romantic, rustic cottage core is what the, what the kids say now. <laughs> it's a beautiful bar and I hope you enjoyed watching today. Have a great week everyone. Take care.